Two tests remain for the women here at the 2023 Noble CrossFit Games. And we are joined in the booth by the man who defined Barzera in Carson, California. He's pretty fit. He won the CrossFit Games four straight times, six team titles. There's a runner-up in 2010. We don't talk about that, though. No, that, that was a... That was, that was a year that we've expunged from the record book. Rich, how you doing, man? Here. Thanks for doing this. Yeah, yeah, thanks for having me. Long I know that you've been dealing with, with the Roman situation. Yeah. How is he doing right uh, now? Disappointed. Uh, yeah. Man, I hate to see these next two tests that came out, uh, to see Roman not get to do the uh, – he would have – not, not, not to take anything away right. from what Adler's doing, but these were two home runs for Roman, so I hate to see that. Uh, super proud of what he put in there at the end, and, and just to – it's tough, you know? You had a moment here with him. What were you saying? Uh, sure. Nothing, <laughs> nothing outside of just proud of him. And hey, just go out there and do what you, you know, you came here to do, and you're a fighter, and, and it's what he showed, you know. And then the community get behind him is incredible. I mean, I don't even think I could do that. One, one foot double under. So uh, I hate, hate to see it, but love to see that this is what, you know, what they're, what they're about. So it's impressive. Yeah, it's just a it's a hard emotional uh, emotional thing to watch, but sports, you know, sports. Well, test number eleven is the parallel bar pull, Stacy. Eight rounds for time. Down and back on the P bar traverse. Thirty heavy jump rope, double unders. Tax and hand over hand bit. sled pull. You got it. Not a light load there. Two hundred ninety pounds for the females. There will be nine women on the competition floor here. Taking on this test. Keep an eye on We're Paige Powers. Paige, Paige Powers. Watch Paige Powers here. Yeah, we do a lot of heavy double unders. Uh, she's really good gymnastic. Well, she's just a really good athlete, but uh, good gymnastically, good grip wise. Uh, fired up to see her moving up the leaderboard today. She's so young and uh, it's cool to watch. Fun, fun athlete to be around too. Only 15 points out of that top 10. She's kind of rolling on some momentum yeah. today. Crushed it this morning, and uh, you know she's been up and down all weekend. But you know when it counts, and, and, and moving up the leaderboard on Sunday. So like I said, uh, we we have we have a lot of fun. Paige and Bailey are, are fun to be around most of the time. They think they're funnier than they are, but they're really fun. <laughs> 32 reps per round, and Paige Powers is among the leaders here, along with Lisa Fuliano, working on that first sled pull, 290 pounds, 131 kilos on that sled. Now this test drew some inspiration from what I think I bet you both did. Yeah, the 2014 yeah. push pull, which is, I think, one of the top moments that was inside the tennis table. That, that was a great race with That was a fun event. I will say I do like this anchor a little bit better than the <laughs> I would have heard that myself as well. Then, uh, yes. You know, We've come a long way, so th this is a really cool event, man. That also might, sorry to interrupt, that might have also been the year that the heavy rope, rope uh, kind of came about. Yeah, yeah, probably, yeah, We're right around there. Oh, uh, no. Well, was it the, uh... I knew there were heavy ropes. There, there was a heavy yeah, double under in that workout, but... Yeah, it was one of the workouts, but what I'm... The, the overall test is, is it's been fun to watch. It's been a really cool, cool test. Uh, every every event has been fun to watch, and, and it's, I, I'm blown away with what they did this year with, with how well-rounded each section. You know, there's been some complaints about cuts and all that, but we, we've talked about it a little bit on the podcast. As long as the test is good, what if, you know, you've had your chance within those cuts, and it's well-rounded, and I think to this point, we've seen a well-rounded test. Well, I know a director of the Noble CrossFit Games, Adrian Bosman, I mean, he really, he wants a well-rounded test. Yep. He doesn't want to kill, so to say, these, these athletes. He wants to protect them. He wants to keep them safe. He wants them to feel relatively good. Tested, right. Tested At and the not end, injured. Right, right. That's it. That's it. At the end of a really long weekend. Yeah, so it's been fun to watch. How's Paige been feeling going into this uh, test? I think they're all they're all beat up. You know, it's a long weekend and uh, prepared, but but it's been uh, it's a grind. You know how it goes. It's by day, what day are we on? Day four now. Um, this is this is kind of when it starts to separate a little bit when you see you know the amount of volume that these athletes are doing and uh, the more efficient you can be and the better off you can be in the long run. Danielle Brandon is in the lead here. She's on her now third. Of eight sled pulls here. You're going to see Danielle push through the entire foot, almost as if a deadlift setup, right? She's got to use those powerful legs of hers, but she wants to push through that platform through the entire foot 
And then you see her lean back to get as much of that length of rope pull on her with each and every rep as she possibly can. It's almost like a sumo deadlift high pull you learn at the level one, really, too. A little bit of a clean. It's, it's just an overall total body movement. So it's uh, core to extremity. Absolutely. We preach, right? Talk about that core. You don't really realize it, but on the traverse bars, you've got to keep that hollow position. You cannot get out of control, or you're going to spiral out of control and fall off the bars. And then on the heavy rope, a lot of us think the recipe for success, shoulders, biceps, forearms. Oh, my. How about core, guys? Let's yep. not forget you have to keep a hollow on the dumb under. If you see Paige got the rope just shortened up a little bit. Little you see that so right, that Tommy, and her thumbs are moving. A little bit less, uh, little bit less to hold there and, and uh, a little less weight, so. Look at me. Look like at a you. coach or something. I'm an affiliate. Gotta give a shout out to my, I gotta give a shout out to my peers there at Big Omaha Fitness CrossFit Omaha. All of my fam. Miss you guys. Love you guys. I'll see you soon. See you soon. Danielle Brandon is now halfway through. She's gotta run the rope down and hook up the sled. Three kind of separate a little bit here. Paige, Danielle, and Jacob. She forgot to unscrew the rope. Now, who's moved in the second place? We saw Paige do really well, making a lot of the loser. Yeah. I think that was going to be announced that she was here. She's here. Yeah. She's here. Yeah. What's yeah. been the biggest change we've seen with Paige Power? Uh, I think, you know, just being in the environment of, you know, it's at Mayhem, we have a ton of fun, but when, when it's time to get down to work, we all get down to work. And, as competitive as you can get it without it being too, you know, too toxic to the to the, the the team side of it. You know, like at times we gotta dial it back a little bit because you know everybody wants to win, nobody wants to get buried all the time. So we, we do have a ton of fun. Uh, Paige is such a young athlete, like I said, a good kid. Uh, great to have her around. Darren uh, has been kind of overseeing her programming for the last year. You know, we we kind of. Everybody does a lot of the similar things, but then maybe once or twice a day you might do your own little separate thing that you need to work on. But Paige is she's a great, great athlete, and uh, she's making big improvements. I'm excited for the future. We are too. It's been really fun to watch her. And I'm rooting for that top 10 finish. I know, me too. Me too. She was my favorite to, to pick to win this one. There we go. Nothing even with you coming on. All right. Show. She's, uh, she, I think, you know, as the workout goes on, she's gonna, she's super efficient. She's got a strong core, like we said. Uh, that grip, you know, maybe that little bit of help on the, the double under. She's about to make a little slide in here, so she's doing well. Brandon Wolf, a power for the the top three here in this first of two heats. Again, our Brandon heads back to the parallel bars. She is fast on these bars. Look at this turnaround. Boom, boom, Quick. and she's back. Quick. Yeah, yeah there's it's no literally pause. a half spin. At, next time, if you look at Paige, she does that little like pause kind of there to get her arms right. Yeah, she makes the half, the half time turn. Time. Power your performance with Momentus. Enter to win the ultimate prize pack at livemomentus.com slash CrossFit. You gotta be smart on that turn though. You miss that turn and it's a long no rep. So yeah, we saw that out of Justin Medeiros. Yeah. He beat one for the men. Being deliberate, I think that's the big thing. You know, we've seen a couple of mistakes by some of the athletes at different events. Just, you know, Roman hopping off the box, going to the row, going to the wrong movement. You know, like those little things, especially in these workouts with these competition and how tight um, these workouts are, makes a huge difference. So uh, it's just trying to limit those mental mistakes as much as the physical plays into it, the mental's huge on it. Too. How do you guys train it? You don't? No. no I mean, yeah. <laughs> you try to. Just try to think about it. I think the, the competitive aspect of what, you know, our environment we have there at Mayhem, you know, you just, uh, it just kind of naturally happens. But you try to talk it out. It's hard for me, you know, like uh, as the, the kind of athlete I was, you were, you were kind of thinking about that stuff regardless. And so for me to kind of step back and, and try to make sure that they recognize some of those things, like just little things like watching who's lifting what on the lifts yesterday and trying to, you know, like play points games. And you can't get too caught up in that, but you got to be thinking about that. And so it's such a uh, be on the offense and, and, and kind of like watching. And it's a hard thing to teach, really. It's, it's just almost inherent in, in competitors, everybody who's played sport for a long time. And so it's just tough. Oh, good. I, I don't think many people really realize how strategic yeah, yeah, these and workouts are and these tests are, and even a normal affiliate, even in a normal cross sure, sure. yeah, yeah, yeah. and, and, and if your plan goes, goes uh, haywire, 
Well, he's friendly, friendly uh, to the internet. <laughs> goes haywire. How, how can you adjust on the fly if you need to? You know, because let's be honest, um, things aren't always going to go according to plan. And so you got to be an athlete. That's why I preach to these young kids like use CrossFit as a sport or like a training methodology. But play sports. Play as many sports as you can. You're going to learn life lessons. You're going to have to learn on the fly. You're going to have to lead people. Be a part of a team. Uh, so. An yeah. unstructured sport. I tell my boys all the time. Go out and play. Justin, make you're going to go out and play 500 all day long. Exactly. Climb the trees. Do some, make mud pies. I don't know. Really, yes, just do, you know, get outside, do different things. So, uh, yeah, I, 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 that's my big thing. That's my soapbox, I guess, when I will get asked by these kids, like, hey, what do I need to do to, to, to make it one day? And I'm like, play sports as long as you can, because when you get our age, all you get to do is uh, work out. You don't get to really play any sports. Well, Daniel Brandon just ripped through that test. She's going to set the top time at 8.48.42 seconds. Yeah, you might have missed it by one, I think, Stace. Paige's going to wrap it up here. Hey, good job, though. Thank you. I would have agreed with you, though, so. <laughs> Paige Powers is just about done with her final sled tour. We've got to make contact with that other sled. Now, one final parallel bar traverse for the woman who one Wadapalooza to kind of kick off the season down there in Miami. You know, keeping the momentum going. 918.73 seconds for Paige. And they can finish up the four right here. The raw three has been inside the top three in this competition right now. 14th place overall, trying to get herself into the final heat. The test 12 later on this afternoon. Sean, she won the cross country 5K and beat, no offense, gentlemen, 13 of the individual men in the field. I've been beat by several women on the run. <laughs> so, uh, you know, there's no offense taken. So that brings me to career doing that as Emily Ross comes across the finish line. Menza is your leader on the competition floor. Had to meet her mom and brother last night. Good view of her just poorly and pushing through that platform. Don't tell her brother, but she was better than he was. Ooh. 10.29.62 seconds for Semenza. Interesting to see, you know, thrusters are surprisingly grippy. Um, and then going into that overhead rack or overhead position to try to hold on to that line. So, uh, yeah, it'll be a fun, fun final to watch. This is Juliana just finished the move. Final bowl. What do you remember the most about that 2014 first bowl? Man, that was so much fun. Me and Josh back and forth. Honestly, I didn't. You get lost in just what kind of happened, and, but like little things kind of like stick out and random. Like and just you asking, like I remember running back to the wall, and the like I can still feel the plexiglass and the, the the night air that night. It was like a good night in Carson. You know, we, that, that's the one thing I would say we miss kind of here in, in Madison is that open air stadium feel in in the close proximity. Of here, you know. This place is incredible in the Coliseum, and it's fun, but there's something about that, you know, California night air. And, uh, I, I don't know, I just remember that event, me and Josh going back and forth, you know, and it, it just kind of all settling, everybody goes out hot, and then me and Josh kind of slowly, it turned it into kind of a two-horse race, and back and forth, fighting those sandbags with your feet, and uh, man, it was uh, it was so much fun, and then really having no idea, it was cool that uh, while we were doing the interview, they put all the scores yeah. up, and, the, and, and seeing that I'd gotten kind of moved back into first overall, it was a complete shock. I had no idea that was going to happen. So uh, I still have those memories, you know. So it's uh, it was fun. Are you proud? But is in. Nice. And that'll do it for the opening heat. Danielle Brandon with the top time, 8:48.42 seconds, with one heat remaining. It was Danielle Brandon out front from the start here, Stacy. She never took her foot off the gas. She didn't. She moved through those traverse bars quickly. She was able to push through the floor and just hand over hand rope pull that heavy sled, 290 pounds sled across the floor. 
And her double unders, I think, were effortlessly done. I, I think she maybe broke once or twice, if not kept everything unbroken. And a smooth sailing finish for her. Danielle Brandon, 848.42 seconds, followed by Paige Powers and Emily Rolfe. So one heat remains here. Rich, thanks so much for taking yeah, the awesome. time to do this. Thanks I know you're super me. busy. you got a lot going on. We really appreciate yes. it. Awesome. Thanks, and thanks. give Roman our best. Will do. Will do. Thank you, guys. One heat remains for the women here in Test 11. We are down to the final heat for the women here in Test 11, the second to last test that these individuals will face here at the 2023 Noble CrossFit Games. Thanks for being with us, everybody. I'm Sean Woodland with the second fittest woman in the 35 to 39 year old division, Stacey Tovar, and it's Nikki Grazer down on the competition floor. The overall standings after 10 tests, Emma Lawson continues to hang on to the overall lead, but Laura Horvath has crept closer after test number 10, and Ariel Lowen is hanging on to that third and final spot on the podium. She has a pretty comfortable lead over Alex Kazan, but earlier, Laura Horvath wins, but Emma Lawson had a very strong performance here. She knew she had to hang with Laura, and she did what she needed to do to kind of Keep, uh, uh, keep some momentum rolling here. But Laura Horvath proves she still loves to move heavy things. She handled that 200 pound sandbag so easy over that final log. But again, Emma did what she needed to do. Damage control is what we call it here, Sean. Test 11 is the parallel bar hole. Eight rounds for time. Down and back on the P-bar traverse. 30 heavy rope double unders. And one section hand over hand sled pull, not light. 290 pounds on that sled. Recipe for success is delivered by Trifecta. What do you got, Stacey? Shoulders, biceps, forearms. <laughs> oh my! And the long rope is the toughest rope. There's black floor where it meets the white floor. That's going to be the challenging part and getting it past that. It'll be smooth sailing, but get out of the black as fast as you can. Ten women on the competition floor for this second and final heat. Ariel Lowen is in lane four. Third place overall right now, 87 points up on Alex Kazan. 23 points out of that podium. Let's go down to Nikki Brazier with more. I had a chance to catch up with Ariel Lowen in the warm-up area back, and she said she normally does not pay attention to the leaderboard during competition, but she knows where she's at, and so she's going to give it her all and make a run for the podium. If she ends up keeping that third place spot, she will be the fifth woman ever in CrossFit Games history to stand atop the podium as a mother. 10 seconds. Emma Lawson and Laura Horvath still battling for the top spot. Lawson has a 23-point lead over Horvath. Horvath was able to shave 25 points off of that deficit in the prior test. We are underway. Time to beat belongs to Daniel Brandon at 848.42 seconds. We start with the trip up and down those parallel bars, and now the 30 heavy rope double unders. You use that rope. What is it like compared to just a normal jump rope that people use in everyday work? Slightly awkward. It's not the rope that's actually heavy, it's the handles. So that's what tacks the grip, and that also is what tacks the shoulders. And then when you have a heavy handle in your hand, the timing and the accuracy of your jump is just that much more specific. And of course, you got the heart rate. It's, it, it increases the heart rate tremendously. And so you have to just kind of figure out how to breathe through all of that and relax as much as you possibly can. Alexis Raptis is in the lead along with Laura Horvath and Ariel Lowen. So Emma Lawson is one of the last women done with her first of eight sled pulls here. Sean, she struggled on the turn of the traverse. So we'll see as athletes, you know, she may not have the, the ability here to work on a traverse back at home. Um, and so they're trying to figure it out on the fly. They've got eight rounds to do that. She was much faster on this second round than she was the first, so hopefully she can pick up some speed here as we advance her on this test. Alexis Raptis is your leader right now. Going to heat followed by Earl Lowen and Earl Horvath. Lowen, Raptis, and Horvath all to their second sled pull. 290 pounds on that sled. Now remember, Sean, the white part of the floor is much more smooth 
than the black. So they want to keep some the sled moving straight down the floor. They want to avoid hitting the black at all costs. Laura Horvath is now in the lead. Back to the double unders for 30 more reps. There's 32 scored reps per each round, 256 total. Laura Horvath in the green, middle of your screen, lane six. Let's not forget she was a rock climber, Sean. Those forearms know how to handle grippy things. The heavy rope should not be a problem for her. And this hand over hand sled pull, I would say, is definitely one of those things in her wheelhouse. Emma in the white sports bra, middle of your screen there. Our leader, Red Shorts, is in dead last, Sean, in this heat. She and Gabby McGowan are bringing up the rear here, but Laura Horvath is once again on the warpath here. Think about what she did last year, making the late charge to get herself onto the podium. She is dominating so far here on the final day to try to put herself on top of the podium. Past the three minute mark, timing is presented by G-Shock, the official watch of the Noble CrossFit Games. Horvath has just one sled pull remaining to close out. Her first set of four, then she'll run the rope back down the floor and hook up to the second and final sled. Unbroken set of double unders. You'll see Laura here, green sports bra, sitting down on the floor, middle of the screen, pulling the rope hand over hand. Knees tracking right over the toes as if it's a deadlift, right? You want to push through that platform. Now, hold up, all by herself, we're going to wait down the floor. She wants that right. I can see the look in her eyes. She has been on an absolute mission today. Already has a test win under her belt earlier. As now Alex Gazan is going to be the second woman down the floor, followed by Ariel Lowen and Catherine David's daughter. Here's the thing, Alex Gazan, 87 points out, all right? Ariel Lohan coming down the floor in the blue tank top there, dragging her rope. Gymnastics background, so can take the traverse bar maybe a little bit faster than Gazan. But I think Gazan has a little bit more power on the sled, and she's been a little bit more efficient on the double under. We'll see how she does here on the traverse. Gazan trying to work her way on the podium, but she's got to put some distance between herself and Ariel Lohan in order to chew into that 87 point deficit. Oh, Horvath is back onto the sled as Emma Lawson is now just getting back. Lawson right now is in eighth place in this heat. And if that, if that continues, Laura oh, Horvath will be your new overall leader heading into the 12th and final test. She's just not as fast on that turnaround. She's just most girls, from what I've been seeing here on the floor, analyzing down up. It's a boom boom, it's, a, it's one hand goes across and the other one meets it. And she's kind of hanging out on the end of the traverse bar for a second or two. And that's just more time and her tension. Her shoulders are fatigued, her triceps are smoked, her forearms are tacked. She's got to pick up the dirt rope. We're well, back to the double unders now. Awesome, moving on. Getting through those double unders. Now watch this turn, she meets her other hand, she hangs out for a good one, two seconds before she pops the other hand onto the other side of the bar. You have to be a little bit faster than that. Hold that back to the sled pull. She'll have two more pulls after she completes this. Meanwhile, Catherine David's daughter, the sled dog, has moved into second place. David's out of coming in in eighth place overall. I think I've seen her take. She is a full round ahead of Emma Lawson. So Laura Horvath looking like she's gonna wear the white leader's jersey heading in to the 12th and final test. 
Laura Horvath of Air and the Green Sports Bra middle of your screen. Our leader looks so relaxed. Take a look at her shoulder position compared to Emma Lawson. Emma Lawson, you see with every jump, she's kind of lifting her shoulders, trying to try get that heavy rope around and down twice underneath her feet. Laura just looks so cool, calm, and collected. Breathing with each and every rep. This right here shot is her jam. This hand over hand rope pull, being that rock climber, not a problem for her. And we do know she loves to move heavy objects. Think back to 2018 when she made her rookie debut in the two stroke pull test where she reeled in Catherine Davis' daughter and that had a sled pull in it. So she's had no problem with that clearly. And now she's back to the parallel bars. Watch her transition here. Just a quick. Slide over, slide back, and back down she goes. Pull that back to the 30 double. Up. There's 256 total score repetitions here. Alex Kazan is now fighting with Catherine Davis out for second place here in this heat. Emma Watson with that 23 point lead over Horvath. That's going to disappear. Ariel Lowen trying to pull off Alex Kazan and Alexis Raptus for the third and final spot on the podium. Emma Lawson here this morning. Their sandbags might have took a little bit more wind out of her sail than we think, Sean. Test number 10. Final sled pull here for Laura Horvath. And then one last parallel bar traverse. And Laura Horvath, two for two on Sunday and will be number one with one test remaining. Perfectly executed. Alice Kazan has moved ahead of Ariel Lowen now for second place. And we're starting to get into the point where times from the first heat are going to factor in. Danielle Brandon's time is now the second best at 848.42 seconds. 918.73 is where Paige Power sits in third. But Kazan is now done. She's got to hurry if she wants to finish third in this test. And she's going to get in inside of Power's time by about two seconds. So 916.53. Here's Captain David's daughter as Emma Carey is across. Carey and Davis down are helping out Kazan, and now Ariel Lowen is in. Alexis Raptus looking to finish up. And she is gone. Now Emma Lawson in the middle of your screen has finished her final sled pull. Set in the magnitude of that achievement. Unreal. I remember being next to her at the Rams in 2009. And I remember every year after that, Sean. But the most impressive thing to me was now being a mom myself of two. Was she you know, eight, nine months postpartum? And the epic moment that every CrossFitter, if they were here or watching in 2022, her snatch was. The coolest thing to witness that night in the Coliseum here at the Atlanta Center. Gabby McGowan is just about done, and you mentioned that we've had a lot of iconic moments here. We just saw one with Roman Plenikoff, and then Annie Thoris' daughter lift will certainly be one that people think about when they think about the time we spent here at the Atlanta Energy Center. Now, Annie Thoris' daughter is going to finish up. That leaves Emma Tall. As the only one left on the floor, she only has one slight pull remaining. The two of the greats from Iceland right there. Four total championships between the two of them. And Danny Thor's daughter, who actually inspired Captain David's daughter to get a big crowd. So after David's daughter saw what Annie was able to achieve in 2011 and 2012. 
that's the spirit of our community, Sean. We rally around each other, like-minded individuals, surrounded by great people who genuinely care. I saw that play out earlier if you watched. Emma Tall is now done. And she's got to get across those parallel bars and over the finish. And Emma Tall is in. Laura Holdout picks up her second test win of the day. She'll earn 100 points. Emma Lawson finished in 10th place. But Sean, it was all Laura. It was all Laura for about there. Fill your screen, green sports bra, green shorts. This sled was no problem. Any sort of heavy load, odd object, it's all Laura. Traverse car, no issue at all. Orbath with that test win earns the 100 points. Emma Lawson down in 10th will earn 55. So Laura Horvath unofficially should have a 22 point lead atop the overall standings heading into the 12th and final test. And Danielle Brandon will take second out of heat number one. Let's go down to the competition floor. The Razor once again for Laura Horvath. Laura, that is two wins, 200 points on the last day of competition. How do you find the strength and the energy after four days of competing to continue to charge up the leaderboard like this? I love Sunday. That's my favorite day of the week. I love it. If you were to find yourself at that top spot on the podium this year, what would it mean for you? It would be that my hard work paid off, that all the hard work and effort I put into my training is finally paying off. And after everything you've been through already this weekend, how do you set yourself up for success for one final test? Oh, it's one last workout, baby, so I'm just going to leave it all out there. Easy. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Only one test remains, and Laura Horvath will have the overall leader's jersey the next time she takes the floor. Coverage will continue here at the 2023 Noble CrossFit Games. You can head to games.crossfit.com for leaderboards and all the information about the competition. Stay with us, everybody. One test left in Madison, Wisconsin.